So in this video, I want to talk about how many Wagner casualties and deaths there were. Now, I've talked about in the past, I've talked about how many um, Russian soldiers have been killed, not just using the Ukrainian figures. I've shown you the Ukrainian figures, but also show you, and that was this video about 10 days ago. Um, but also just using the statistical models that were created about actual verifiable deaths recorded as kind of a, a floor for casualties. So this is NPR was talking about at least 47,000 that they could actually count. Now that doesn't include people that were out at, you know, in the battlefield. This is Russian soldiers being counted. Um, and then you know, the, the Russian government isn't forthcoming. Last September was the last time they gave an official count, and they put the number at a laughably low 6,000 or so that have been killed in battle. So that's that's not right. Um, and so, again, I did this video, and now I'm going to talk just about Wagner. Now, yesterday I was showing you how Putin was talking about how truth is our best weapon, and that's why the, the West is afraid of RT, because they're afraid of the truth. They're not afraid of Russian state media because they're afraid of truth. They're, they're worried about the lies that are infecting. That's not, it's not about truth. Here's how much it's not about truth. Ukrainian army's casualty rate is 10 times Russia's losses, says, yeah, right? Really? 10 times? And they're, they're constantly talking in those kind of hyperbolic terms, and that's not really helpful to getting anywhere near truth. So here's an article in the Kiev Post. Uh, Wagner reveals massive death toll in figures from mercenaries. This was yesterday fighting in Ukraine. Unverified numbers, just 16,000 Wagner fighters have made it through Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine alive, uninjured so far. So, how do we get there? A Wagner mercenary fighting in Ukraine would only have a 1 in 5 chance of making it through unscathed. And I'm going to show you how the math works. Before we do that, though, I want to show you this. So, this is predicated on this post, uh, the Wagner in the Ministry of Defense. The State Duma Deputy, ex-commander of the Airborne Forces, Colonel Vladimir Shamanov, said in an interview with Radio Tachka NSN that more than 30,000 fighters of the PMC Wagner signed contracts with the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. Okay, so either he's lying or he's very bad at math. And yeah, let's let's continue. According to my information, he says in the radio interview, approximately 32 to 33,000 Wagnerites signed contracts with the Ministry of Defense, and from 7 to 10,000 are with Prigozhin. That's what he said in the interview. Now, later on, he had to admit that he just made crap up. So, Shamanov's words made so much noise among the Wagner Wagners that the next day the Deputy General confessed to Radio Tachka NSN that he invented everything. This is just his opinion. Okay, so he just made it up. But then... How are we to believe this, that the Russian army has lost 10 times less troops than the Ukrainian military? We can't. We really can't. But we can at least do the math on Wagner. So here's here's Wagner's uh, figures, and uh, they, they lay everything out here. Wagner had 78,000 fighters in total. 49,000 of these were convicts. 22,000 were killed, 40,000 were wounded. That leaves just 16,000 that made it through fighting without being killed. So your odds, if you, like 49,000 of those were convicts, your odds of actually going from jail to freedom were incredibly low. Okay, the Russian Ministry of Defense claims that 33,000 Wagner, uh, Wagner fighters had signed contracts with the Kremlin, as we talked about. Uh, yeah, that's not really what happened. It couldn't have possibly been. And here's the math to show that why they caught him in a lie. So you had total Wagner, 78,000. And in the formula, we're just looking at C3 divided by C3. That's going to be 100%. Now, if we divide out the number of convicts, we're going to see that it is about 62% were convicts. Now, if we divide and see how many were killed, we're going to see that about 28% are killed of total Wagner. And then if we were going to look at how many are wounded, about 51% are wounded. So, killed and wounded total is going to be 79%. Just about 80% of Wagner killed or wounded. Now, think about it. What's their big achievement? They took Bakhmut. It took them six months, and they lost 80% of their forces. Crazy high attrition rate. 
Now, we don't know what actually happened on the other side. We don't know what the Ukrainian losses are, so we can't say that this was a Pyrrhic victory, but it kind of looks like that because the defender generally has a better time than the attacker, generally speaking. It's not always true, but it kind of it took six months and 80% of their fighters in order to get there. And then what's remaining is about 20% of them actually survived. And so with that 20%, now again, 20% that survived, here, here's the interesting thing. If that is true, then Prigozhin didn't lead a freedom march or a mutiny or whatever with 25,000 men. He didn't have 25,000 men, right? That's that's the figure that was kicked around in the media for so long. 25,000 uh, Wagner soldiers are heading toward Moscow. Nothing near that. Okay, so let's go back to the article. In total, 78,000 of the PMC Wagner passed through the Ukrainian business trip. This is a quote. That's what they called this. That, that's horrible. The Ukrainian business trip. Now, up to 10,000 have left and are leaving for Belarus. And remember, we only have about 16,000 left. So that would leave, if that's the case, about 6,000 with the Russian Ministry of Defense. Now, that, that's all that they have left. Now, that's really interesting. So what are the Russians to do with this? Again, Wagner's off the battlefield. And they have the option of going to the Russian Ministry of Defense. It doesn't look like many of them actually wanted to do that. So what is Russia going to do? Well, here's an article in Reuters telling you exactly what Russia is going to do. Russia extends eligibility for a military call-up by at least five years. They're running short on people. They need more, so they're expanding the age limits, which is not generally the best idea if you can avoid that. It is already raising the upper age limit for men to be called up for compulsory military service to 30 from 27. So that's already kind of old, on the older side at least, and it has made it much harder for young men to avoid a draft by dodging recruiters handing out call-up papers. You don't just have to hand out call-up papers. You, can, you now have an app, and if you get the the notification on the app, you have to show up. The law passed on Tuesday allows men who have completed their compulsory military service without any further commitment to be mobilized up to the age of 40, 50, or 55, depending on their category. Okay, so Putin has no intention of going anywhere. He is not planning to bow out anytime soon. Any talk about an off-ramp, this is nonsensical to him. He's in it for the long haul. And you can see that because I showed you an article just two days ago where um, in sophomores, juniors, and seniors in high school, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, they're going to be doing some basic military training. So this is how we're going to backfill um, these Russian troops that have been lost, either Russian troops or Wagner PMC or whatever. They're, they're going to call up, but they're not going to call up a as far as I can see right now, a general mobilization where a million men are going to flee the country, as happened before, they're going to do it incrementally and they're going to do it by playing with the age limits. It's, that's, that's how they're getting there. Um, okay, one last clip. I showed this yesterday and it's worth repeating because it's just pretty funny and it's actually about right, about what, you know, what uh, Starsky said yesterday when he was talking about how many people were, or what was hit in Odessa. Let's listen. No military targets were hit whatsoever, except several hundreds of NATO generals, one million Bradleys, and the orbital station Babylon 5. That you will soon find out uh, from the reports of the Russiast MOD. No military targets were hit whatsoever, except several hundreds of NATO generals, one million Bradleys and the orbital station Babylon 5. That you will soon find out uh, from the reports of the Russiast MOD. Amos right? Okay, so it's pretty funny because they exaggerate all the time. And when they exaggerate, at a certain point, you got to realize those exaggerations were lies. And when that hits you, you can't really depend on it. But when truth actually leaks out about what the actual math is, when it hits you that they only had 78,000 and so many were killed, and so many were wounded, and they had 80% casualties, they only had 16,000 left, and yet you hear that 33,000 have joined the Russian MOD. It's kind of like the Babylon 5 spaceship, and hundreds of generals, and thousands of tanks were wiped off the battlefield. And it, it becomes almost cartoonish, and you can't trust what the Russians say about things. Now, these were Prigozhin's figures, so, wow. And there's only 16,000 left. All right, 
That's what we know about Wagner and the battlefield. Thank you for your time. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. It really helps me when you share this on social media. Thank you for subscribing. I do these daily and I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you for most of all for being the kind of person that actually cares about what's happening in Ukraine.